guys welcome to my next video thanks for watching this one is going to be as you saw by the title the beauty scenario tag i was tagged by the absolutely gorgeous shell 85 no x 85 x um i'll put a link down below so you can go and see her channel and check out her video she tagged me and quite a few others and i've wanted to do this tag for ages but never really got around to it so when i saw her tag yesterday i was like get your butt in gear nick and get it done Right, so there's eight questions. I've written them all down on a piece of paper, so if I keep looking down, I've got a little box of goodies here as well. Right, so I'm just going to jump right in uh, with the first question. So, you have to get rid of all your foundations. Oh, God, no. Um, but you get to keep one drugstore and one high end. Which ones do you choose and why? Right, I've only got two high end or what I would call high-end foundations anyway. One is uh, Estee Lauder's Double Wear and the other one is Urban Decay Naked Skin, um, which is the one I'm gonna choose. I absolutely love this. I hauled this about four weeks ago. It's beautiful. It's the most amazing foundation ever. Naked Skin is a bit of a sort of fib really because it is brilliant coverage on this thing it just goes on so smooth and it's just amazing so if i got to keep any high end foundation it would be this one because i love it i love the packaging i just love the whole thing about it it's just oh it just screams posh and high end doesn't it so that would be that and i have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of drugstore foundations but um if i had to choose one that I could keep for all time and never use another drugstore foundation, it would have to be the Bourjois Healthy Mix. I love this. And this is the original one. I actually prefer the original one to the uh, newer sort of formula that they bought out on this. I happen to be really lucky and find this on my market stall. He sells this regularly. It is the old packaging and the old formula, and I love it. I have shade 52. Um... And I just think it's gorgeous. It just smells nice. It, it illuminates my skin. It's got pretty good coverage on it. It's buildable. Um, and it's just lovely. I just absolutely love this. Um, so when I first originally bought this, uh, I originally, I've, well, I've lost the original one that I had ages and ages ago. I say I lost it. I think it went walkabout somewhere. Um, but when I saw this on the market stall about three or four weeks ago, I was just oh my god I've got to have it so I bought two of these so I've got a backup of this as well because it's the original formula it's just the original packaging and I love it it's like a plastic packaging I think the new one is like glass um but I, I just love this so those are the two foundations that I would keep so question number two you go for an interview and the lady uh who's interviewing you has lipstick on her teeth do you approach the subject or ignore it now I am the sort of person that would actually tell her. I probably wouldn't tell her. Um, I don't know if I'd tell her during... No, I wouldn't tell her during the interview because I think that would be pretty embarrassing. Um, I definitely wouldn't ignore it because I can't ignore it. And I wouldn't expect anyone to ignore it if I had lipstick on my teeth. I'm just double checking now that I haven't. Um, no, I would definitely wait for the interview to finish. And then just like say to her in the nicest, politest possible way, do you mind if I say something? Um, because, you know, if you approach it and say, oh my God, you got lipstick on your teeth, love. It's, it's not going to go down well. But I don't think I would leave it because I think it's pretty like, I wouldn't want to walk around with lipstick on my teeth and know that someone hasn't told me. Um, because, you know, you go to smile at someone, you've got a big old glob of red or pink lipstick on your teeth it's not nice so yes i would tell her i'd definitely approach the subject um and i would tell her sort of at the end of the interview and say you know you've got lipstick on your teeth just you know sort it out love um <laughs> yeah so that's yes i would approach it I'm that, I'm that sort of person you're not feeling yourself and you need a pick me up what lipstick do you put on to make yourself feel beautiful i am wearing it now um there is absolutely no surprise as to what this is going to be because it's just beautiful um it's the rimmel color rush lipstick and this one is in boom shika boom i absolutely love this i've been wearing this constantly for about three or four days um it's just bright and cheerful and it's just a really really nice pink 
and it just makes me feel good about myself. I absolutely love this one. Um, it's just a really, really nice pink. I mean, look at the pink. It's gorgeous. It's something you can just bang on while you're driving or without a mirror. It's beautiful. So, yeah, I absolutely love this. I love the whole range of these. As you know, I've done a video on this. I've done a rave, rave video on this. So, yeah, that, that one. Right. Ooh, this is a good one. I was actually going to do a makeup look for this one, but then I thought, no, those days are gone. Um, you go back in time for a day to your teenage years. How would you do your hair and makeup differently? Right. I grew up, I was a teenager during the 80s. Best decade ever, can I just say. Um, I loved it. I loved the 80s. I loved everything about the 80s, the hair, the makeup. I just, I just loved it. Um, I can't do my hair as I would have done. Oh, it's pretty close, actually. But most of the 80s, I had a perm. Um... I think if I can find it, I will assert, insert a picture at the end of me with my blonde sort of perm. Um, <laughs> it's really funny. Looking back on it now, I'm like, oh my God, I had a perm all the time. But yes, I did constantly have a perm. Um, I had blondish hair. I always bleached it. I always permed it. It was in the worst condition ever, but I loved my hair. And makeup wise... It was just blue eyeshadow. I just loved blue eyeshadow. Any shade of blue. I used to literally just thick blue eyeshadow over my lid and lots of mascara and a little flick with eyeliner. It was just the done thing. And I don't know, lipstick wise, it was really bright pinks, like fluorescent pinks. Um, I think it was, I can't remember the actual name of the company. It could have well been collection if they were around then i don't know but there was this shocking pink it was actually called shocking pink and it was fluorescent bright Nicki minaj pink it was lovely so you know you can imagine it the perm the bright blue sort of like um lid color the massive black lashes and the bright shocking pink lipstick it was fab hmm. i can sh no i can't show you that's not it's not i've got my husband in it doesn't want to be on camera um yeah, if I can find that picture of me hanging out with my buds in uh, the town that we lived in, um, I will insert it at the end. So get ready for a shock if I, if I can find it. But I don't know if I can. All right, so that's what I would have done differently. Um, you go to the hairdressers. I love this one. You go to the hairdressers um, and ask for a pixie lot hairstyle. But she doesn't hear you. And she gives you a pixie cut. Do you? Do you, do you, can I not write the rest of the question? Do you say thank you, then call someone and cry hysterically? And do you cry in the chair and things get very awkward? Or do you complain to the manager and demand your money back? Right, first off, I would not complain to the manager. I would complain to the dozy mare that did my hair um and but then i think you know unless you're sitting there reading a mag or she's you know distracting you with a where are you going on holiday speak um i think you probably noticed that she was cutting quite a lot of hair off because a pixie cut's quite you know short um but if i was distracted and i didn't see what she was doing i would have a right go at her for a start because you know i don't shy around the fact that if something is getting to me or pissing me off slightly, I will say something. I'm not shy and retiring. I will literally just go, what the have you done to my hair? Um, and I wouldn't have paid for it by that point, so I wouldn't pay for it anyway. And then I would literally call the manager over and tell her that she needs to sack this girl because she's either deaf or she's not qualified. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would kick up a fuss because that's what I do best. I love it. Uh, number six. Your friend surprises. The hell surprises? Surprises you with a four day break. You only have one hour to pack. What palette do you grab? Oh, I love this one. Um, I've actually got three, and I think Shell so showed one. 
uh, which is the face case, which I, I want. I love that case, shattered face case, I think it is. And that is definitely my next purchase from Debenhams. Um, but I have actually got three here. I've got one that you can buy online, one high street store, and one um, sort of catalogue type palette. Right, so the first one I'm going to show you is my Avon one. This is just a little compact palette in one. It's quite compact. It's not the most brilliant of packaging because, you know, this comes open quite easily. But if you put like a couple of bands around it and wrapped it in a bit of bubble wrap, you'd be fine. So in this case, you have, you lift up the lid and you have big mirror for a start, but you have all these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. As you can see there, they're amazing. You've got darks, you've got lights, you've got highlights, you've got shimmers, you've got mattes. They are absolutely amazing. You've got a nice big mirror so you can see yourself. There you go. Um, the colours in here are amazing. You've actually got greens in here as well, which is just, oh, I love these colours. There's just like three. Of, that's how pigmented they are. And now I don't know what to do with that. Um, so that's that. And then you can pull this bit down here as you'll see and you have now what do we have well we have two little lip brushes a little eyeshadow type brush which i actually think is quite nice this is a really good blending brush let me just slip it out of its compartment a momento oh this isn't actually a bad brush it's a bit harsh but you know it would work oh god i'm gonna sneeze Terribly sorry about that. Uh, right, what you have here is your little brushes. You've got four sort of blush highlighting shades. You've got two sort of bronzery type colours. Now this is a shimmery bronzer and a matte bronzer. A shimmery bronzer and a matte bronzer. Um, you also have, like I said, highlighting shades and you've also got four lip colours. Uh, lip colours aren't brilliant. I don't really like these glossy sort of things, but you know, they work. So that would be the first palette. It's just nice and compact. Um, yeah, it's just really cute. So I like that one. The next one is a Claire's palette. Now I do apologize for the fact that this, it hasn't been used, but it's um, it's lost its brushes because I got it in the sale. Right, this just literally opens like this. You've got room actually here for probably a lipstick, I would have thought. You could probably get a lipstick in there. Let me just try and see. If I can get a lipstick in there. Oh, oh. oh, I could get a posy tin in there, but it wouldn't work. Right, so there you go. You've got lipsticks up here with a brightening mirror. So this is a blush. Um, don't know if you can see that. It's quite a nice blush. Um, you've got two lip colours, which you could also use as cheek stains as well. So that's those two there. Yeah, you could possibly use them as cheek stains. And then you've got these amazing colours. You've got some neutrals over here. You've got some nice bright colours over here. You've got some highlighting shades at the top. You've got some dark colours at the bottom. That's really sweet. I think the original price of this was £7. I think I got it for 5 That shows you on the back exactly what it's got in it. It's just really sweet. It's really easy to grab. It does get a bit dirty, but... You know, it's a palette that's amazing. The other one I will go for is really compact. I say you could only get this online. Um, Jerome Alexander was only available through QVC or Ideal World at one point. And then he went into places like Wilkinson's and um, Pound Stretcher, Robert Dias, places like that. Because um, he went under the name with JML and I think he got in with them. But this is like his stackables. Now this is really cute. I keep this actually on my bedside, on my vanity, not my bedside table. Because if I'm ever in sort of like a rush to go and I just need a quick look, I will go for this. This has in the top your foundation with all the colour correcting pigments. It's just a really nice, you know... It complements all skin tones. It's just really, really nice. I don't know if you can see it there because it's rubbed in. So you have your foundation in the top. Then the next one, you've got a blusher and a bronzer. Yes, they're sparkly, but, you know, they work. And then in the bottom of that one, you have four eyeshadows. 
which I might add are gorgeous. I love that one, just really pretty. The purple is amazing. Um, you've got like a sort of bronzy colour there and a highlighty sort of yellow colour there. So there's the colours. Let me just swatch them on the back of my hand. You can do a look with that. It's not the most amazing thing ever. I did actually get mine in the end from, I think this retailed to start with at about 24 99 in Wilkinson's. I found mine in in the factory shop for £10 for the whole set. So that is really cute. It's just nice and compact. You can sellotape it all up so it's travel friendly. And that is that. So that was that one. Mm. <laughs> Number seven, you have, your house has been raided. Don't worry, everyone's okay. But your makeup stash has been raided. What's the product you really hope is safe? Now, my makeup stash sort of, isn't really a stash it evolves around the whole bedroom it's like growing it's like my baby it's growing every day it's growing and i add stuff to it i have um sorted a lot of my makeup out but on my one of my sort of like drawer things i have a little i don't know what you call it a little basket that's got all my urban decay stuff in it it's got all my urban decay palettes it's got the setting sprays it's got my eyeliners it's got my um eye primer uh, it's got my foundation, which is there. Um, yeah, basically that's it. And this little basket on its own, I added up the quality of this basket or the quantity price of this basket. Um, and with all the stuff that's in it, this little basket alone is worth over £300. So I would hope that the bastards that broke into my house did not touch my urban decay but then saying that if people are coming in to go through your makeup stash the first things they're going to grab are the urban decay and the the mac and the stuff like that but i would hope that that um would be the safe thing it's all compact in a little basket and it's my little urban decay baby and if anyone touches it they die basically um my daughter often comes into my bedroom and nicks my makeup but she knows that if she lays a finger on my urban decay i'll chop her hand off so it's not even worth going there and thinking about i'm getting quite upset and tearful just thinking about it actually oh, anyway moving on number eight this is the this this was quite difficult i found this quite difficult to answer but after seeing shell's answer i was like you know i know what i'm gonna do um number eight your friend borrows your makeup but returns it in a bad state do you a just pretend you haven't noticed do you b ask them to buy more mm -hmm. or do you c do the same to something of theirs now do the same to something of theirs nah wouldn't stoop to that level to be honest um i would think that uh yeah that's one of my mottos is what goes around comes around and karma's a bitch and stuff like that but i don't think i would purposely go to their house and go into their makeup and trash it just because they've trashed something of mine I think I would politely say something and give them the willing opportunity to offer to buy me a new one. Um, I certainly would ignore it, definitely not ignore it, because that's just out of order, man. You don't borrow someone's stuff and trash it. That's just, that's not right. There's no, I don't think I've got a friend that would do that. And, you know, if I did, they wouldn't be my friend for much longer, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't ignore it. I would I would sort of not do the same to theirs at all. wouldn't stoop to that level. I would basically sort of have a word in their little lug hole about the situation and give them the opportunity to say, would well, you know what, do you want me to buy you another one? Um, and to be honest, I think if they'd offered... I would say, you know, you know, don't don't worry about it. Just try to be a bit more careful next time. But to make them offer to buy me a new one would be satisfactory enough for me. So yeah, that is it. That's the beauty scenario tag. I really like doing this one actually, and it took me twenty minutes. Oh my god, um, I'm gonna have to learn to edit, aren't I? 
Anyway, hey ho. That's the beauty scenario tag. Uh, Shell did actually tag loads and loads of you. Uh, most of the people she tagged would be the ones I would tag as well. So I double the tags that she put under her video. Like I said, go down and check out her channel, find the video and see it. Um, I will try and list all the questions down below so that you can have a peruse and see if you want to do it. It'd be great to see any of you do it. I love it. So I tag all of you basically and yeah have fun with this because i did it was a good laugh and i'll see you again in my next video guys see you all soon bye